I'm just doing a short video to answer a question I get asked all the time. And the question is, does a pilot have to pitch the nose of his aircraft down as he's traveling across the earth? And that is to compensate for the curvature of the earth. Well, the answer is that the aircraft does in fact pitch down as it travels across the earth. And no, the pilot doesn't really notice it because uh, the rate of pitch down is so slow that it's uh, basically imperceptible. And what I'm going to look at is uh, how we actually fly an aircraft by reference to the flight instruments. This is what's called a, a six panel. And uh, it's basically a version of what you'll find in just about every aircraft. And I've also got a model of an analog clock here running on the iPad. And the reason for that will become apparent shortly. But um, I'm just away on a work trip at the moment. So I didn't really have uh, a good aircraft model like I have at home. So I just managed to pick up this little F-18 model from uh, a local toy shop. But... Uh, It'll hopefully do the job. When I get home, I'll try and make a more professional version of this video, but this should uh, answer the question just for the moment. Okay, try not to be too shaky with the camera. Okay, first thing we need to understand is that the Earth is not as small as many people will think, and your typical airliner traveling at 450 knots will actually take 48 hours to travel around the Earth. Now, obviously, they won't do that non-stop. They'll have to stop and refuel, but that's the actual rate at which it's going to travel around the Earth. So if we imagine this aircraft is going to travel all around the Earth, it would obviously have to pitch down and pitch all the way around 360 degrees. That's logical, right? But how long does it take to do that? It takes 48 hours. Now... Come down and have a look at this analog clock, and we're just going to watch it for a few minutes. Notice you can see the, the red second hand sweeping around. The movement is obvious. Can you see the minute hand moving? That's the minute hand. If you watch it really closely for several minutes, you'll obviously see it moving. What about the hour hand? That's the hour hand pointing to the three. Can you see that moving? That hour hand actually moves around the clock once every 12 hours. So it takes 12 hours to go 360 degrees. When we're flying our aeroplane, we take 48 hours to go 360 degrees. So the actual rate of pitching down, the rate the aircraft has to actually pitch down like that, is four times slower than that hour hand is moving. Four times slower. Now, imagine this was a real clock and we grabbed an ant, and we put the ant on the end of that hour hand. Do you think it would feel anything? Do you think it would feel any centrifugal force? Do you think it would feel any movement? Do you think it could actually detect any angular change? Well, the answer is no. And uh, remember, our aeroplane is pitching down four times slower than this. So basically, if I, if I filmed that clock for an hour and then slowed down the video four times, that is how much the aircraft is actually pitching down. So it's 360 degrees in 48 hours. What that equates to is one degree every eight minutes. Just every eight minutes, it's gonna go down about that much. Just one degree, another eight minutes, another degree, another eight minutes, another degree, another eight minutes, another degree. So the rate of movement, the rate of pitch down is just so slow that it's not perceptible. The human body has uh, vestibular sensors. They're the um, semicircular canals inside your ears and they, they are designed to detect motion, but they're not completely infallible. And in fact, the reason you get dizzy when you spin around too much is because they are quite easily fooled. They're not sensitive enough to detect any motion that is less than about two to three degrees per second rotation. So I'll say that again, two to three degrees per second second. Now, if we're moving in our aeroplane and we're only changing pitch attitude by one degree every eight minutes, that is many hundreds of times slower than the threshold at which your human body can detect motion. So there's just absolutely no way the pilot or the passengers are going to feel anything. Okay, now let's talk about why the pilot is not actually conscious of pushing the nose down continually. Remember, I, I think some people must imagine the Earth is tiny and that you actually have to <laughs> fly around like that. It's not that small, you know? As I said, it takes 48 hours to go right around the Earth. 
But anyway, I'll talk a little bit about how we fly an aeroplane. And what I'll do is I'll focus on um, an airliner. We'll use examples for airliner speeds, which are cruising at about 450 knots. The, um, the artificial horizon here is uh, what we call the primary attitude indicator. And when you're flying a large commercial jet or a corporate aircraft, high performance aircraft, you're referring to that instrument um, primarily as uh, the reference for your aircraft attitude. Now, to combine with that, we've got a number of other instruments and the two we'll focus on are the altimeter, which tells us our height, and the vertical speed indicator down here, which tells us if we're going up or down. You'll see that orange needle. It can actually deflect upwards like that when we're climbing and it will deflect downwards when we're descending. And the altimeter is basically like a, it's got a couple of arms, you know, depending upon the complexity. This has got a single arm for hundreds of feet and then it's got a digital readout for the thousands of feet. But, but basically, if we were climbing at 1,000 feet per minute, that orange needle would be up here pointing at the one. And if we were climbing at that rate, this needle would be moving around this dial one revolution every minute. We're climbing at 1,000 feet every minute. Now, when you learn to fly, I don't know how many of your pilots or ever wanted to be a pilot, but when you're flying an airplane manually, you are constantly referring to the attitude indicator, the vertical speed indicator down here, and the altimeter. And you're monitoring them at all times. Now, if we're trying to fly level, if we're trying to maintain level flight, say, for example, 35,000 feet, okay? We want to keep this needle stationary. And if we start to see this vertical speed indicator needle moving up or down, we're going to make an immediate correction. Okay, so if that just started going up slightly, we're going to push forward on the joystick or the control yoke, and we're going to push the nose down just slightly. And what that's going to do is just arrest that rate of descent. Now, when you're flying, when you're hand flying, it's just a constant dynamic process. You're scanning the instruments, you're making minor corrections all the time. Literally every minute you're making maybe half a dozen or more minor corrections. Now, traveling at 450 knots, just one degree of pitch. Now, you'll see that little orange dot at the middle, okay? If we move up to that first white line, that's five degrees of pitch. Now, we move up to the second one, that's 10 degrees of pitch. If we pull the nose up just five degrees while we're flying at 450 knots, we're going to be climbing at many thousands of feet per minute, okay? It's, it's going to be climbing very, very fast rate of climb. So... When we're cruising along, maintaining altitude, we don't want that to move more than a fraction up or down. So we're making slight, slight corrections to the pitch attitude. And it's literally less than a degree, less than half a degree, in fact. Um, if the aeroplane is being flown by autopilot, the corrections are so small that they're basically imperceptible to the pilot. You know, every time the autopilot detects just the tiniest climb and this altimeter moves off its desired altitude just by 10 or 15 feet, the autopilot will make a correction and it's going to push the nose down. Okay, So it never allows the altitude to deviate so much. So now what we've got is a situation where either being hand flown, the pilot is making the corrections manually to maintain the altimeter steady, maintain the vertical speed indicator at zero. It's resulting in incredibly small pitch changes, less than half a degree. That's all you're doing. So it's very, very small when you're hand flying. When the autopilot is flying, it's making rapid, tiny corrections, sometimes 0.1 of a degree. You know, I've actually um, got a head-up display in the aircraft I fly, and it has a much finer resolution of the, the pitch scale on the aircraft. And I can see 0.1 of a degree pitch deviation. When it's on autopilot, that 0.1 of degree, it's constantly adjusting, just like um, like when you're driving down the road. You're driving down the road, even if the road is straight, you don't just hold the steering wheel straight, you're making just the tiniest adjustments all the time to keep the um, keep the car in the middle of the road. And that could be due to uh, maybe a little bit of a few bumps in the road or perhaps uh, a bit of side force from wind. In the aeroplane, there's any number of reasons that your altimeter can just start to fluctuate up or down a little bit very slight air pressure changes or um, turbulence. You know, when the autopilot is flying, it's making numerous tiny, tiny corrections all the time. You know, 10, 15, 20 corrections every minute that are so small, they're not perceptible, 
and then just holding the altimeter steady, you barely even see the vertical speed indicator move. So we're making tiny corrections all the time to compensate for the curvature of the Earth. The nose has to only pitch down one degree in eight minutes. In that eight minutes, the aeropilot has probably made well over 100 or maybe even 200 individual slight corrections, you know, slight corrections of 0.1 of a degree or 0.2 of a degree. If there's any climb detected, the aircraft just pushes the nose down by 0.1 of a degree. You won't see it, you won't even feel it, but it's basically um, absorbing, absorbing that one degree of pitch down all the time as it's making these minor corrections. So yes, so the reality is, as the aeroplane flies across the earth, it is pitching down. The pilot's not conscious of it because he's not even thinking about it. The, the rate of movement is so slow that it's negligible compared to the smaller, more frequent corrections that you need just to maintain altitude, just to maintain the vertical speed indicator steady. And obviously when the autopilot's doing it, um, pilot doesn't even have to touch the controls. You virtually don't see any movement in this artificial horizon. In a head-up display, if you look carefully, you can see tiny deviations in the pitch. One, sorry, 0.1, maximum 0.2 of a degree, you know, as it compensates for, um, for turbulence or updrafts or even this curvature of the earth. It's just holding a steady altitude the whole time. These instruments work on air pressure and they're sensitive enough to notice just slight um, deviations and then the autopilot will correct immediately. So basically, the whole time I've been talking, you see that, that our hand has just moved maybe two or three degrees at most. If we slowed that down um, four times, it hasn't even moved two degrees. And that's about the rate of movement that the aircraft has to pitch down. So hopefully that explains, um, first of all, why pilots don't really notice it and why passengers absolutely cannot feel anything and how it is basically just absorbed in, uh, in the normal method of flying and maintaining altitude.